because I saw your webinar for the trade, um, what was it, two months ago, and I think I immediately started texting and calling Prem going, can we do this for Plum Market? You know, you were spectacular. I mean it quite sincerely. I took three pages of notes. I can only read one of them, <laughs> but you know, I'm very happy that you're willing to do this at 10 o'clock at night. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madeleine. Christophe, wonderful to see you. How are you, oh, my friend? Pepe, you look guapo as normal. <laughs> I wish I could give you a hug right now. Yeah, good to see you, Michael. Good to see you, Nuria, Giuseppe, all of those. Hola. Hi. So Michael's been to the winery too, and so has Nuria. So I'm the only person that has still has to, uh, has to visit you. Uh, we have to fix this. Eh, we have to fix it. As soon as I, I'm permitted to get on a plane, you know, uh, and you don't mind welcoming us from the United States, which at the moment, I don't blame you if you don't. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, you know, it will normalize. Maybe it'll be six months, maybe it'll be a year, but we'll figure it out, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Um, I know that... Uh, Joseph has, uh, oh, he's got a little red wine. What are you drinking? Garnacha, Garnacha Can Sumoy 2018. Ah. Maybe in 2021, we'll reach the market. But I had a very important visit this afternoon. One of the most passionate, dedicated uh, 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 farmers in, in Catalonia from Ampurda. So we were uh, comparing his um, Garnachas in Cariñena with ours. And that is yours. And this is uh, this is Garnacha Cariñena blend. It's not ours. Nothing ah, is, it's his. Oh. No, no, nothing is ours. Nothing but is it, yours. it's a Garnacha from Kansumoy. It's a very special vineyard. Wonderful. That's just great. Well, we can be properly jealous. We've got the how do you pronounce it? Perfume in front of us. In addition to the Blanc de Blanc and the Della Finca, and I think. You know, people are listening to us chat. We just go ahead and start. Um, so I'm going to welcome everyone with just a few words, if that's okay. And Joseph is going to control all the slides. And then once in a while, um, we'll chime in and bug you with a question. But probably not. I don't think you need anyone to bug you with anything. <laughs> you know, I think uh, you can do this uh, solo artist, right? So welcome, everyone. Um, if we haven't met personally, I'm Madeline Perfon, and uh, I'm uh, with Plum Market. I'm proud to say both in Chicago, our Old Town store, and also four stores in Michigan. Uh, two in Ann Arbor, which is really like another country, and two in the Bloomfields, West Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills. And I'm uh, so pleased to, to welcome you all. That's one of the silver linings about these extraordinary times is that we can do something like this and have an event where, you know, we have what? We have Texas, correct? We have Michigan, we have Chicago, and we have Spain uh, physically represented here. And it's, it's pretty intimate and easy. Um, we're gonna spend about an hour together, uh, but you know, if we run uh, a little bit over, we understand if you have to take off, but we have to remember that this is gracious Pepe is 10 p.m. So, uh, but in Spain, that's probably like what? 7 p.m. In, uh, in American time. And I'm Greek, so I understand the, the later uh, sensibility. Uh, we're having this uh, tasting, thanks to uh, Pepe and Joseph. Are you cousins? Can you yeah, very close, very close, eh, Joseph? Very, yeah. yeah very close. <laughs> we're having this thanks to um, uh, Pepe and Joseph, and also you're going to see uh, three other people who are joining us. Michael Korn and Nuria, who are in Michigan, a uh, distributor and importer, respectively, and also Christoph from um, wonderful supplier Cream in Chicago. I was lucky enough to just trip into um, a webinar that Pepe did for the trade for people in the wine business about two months ago. And I was just telling him, I was completely enthralled. I was scribbling notes. I was all, always, all, already a Rebento fan. I mean, it's in the glass, but I didn't have a lot of info floating around in my head. And as soon as it was over, I was asking Christoph if we could do this for uh, Plum Market. And um, as I was telling Josette, Plum Market is very proud to say I work for a beautiful grocery store with a huge wine department. 
And um, uh, not that Reventos needs it, but I'm also very proud of the fact that uh, our prices are completely accessible. They bear examination nationally. And we don't usually talk money on these, but I've got to tell you in checking the prices, those of you, I hope you bought all three because uh, the three pack was a great value. They're staggering values. And that word value to me means wines that way overperform in their price points. Honestly, Pepe, to be drinking, um, you know, method classique wines with this much care and terroir at this price point, you know, I hope you don't raise the prices, but even if you do a little, they're still going to nudge champagne way out of the way. So bravo. Um, but we are doing this webinar style because there's so much uh, to talk about, but there's going to be, you know, somewhere between 45 and 60 of you in the background. I will try to keep a pretty close eye on um, the, um, the chat room and I'm realizing that there may be some confusion because some people thought we were starting at 430 and we did send a reminder email that it was 4 p.m. Eastern Time 3 p.m. Central if I got it wrong I apologize but we are recording this and we will make it accessible to you so you know um, my bad manners if that didn't uh, work out um, I think that's all I'm going to talk about and I'm simply going to thank um, First of all, Joseph for being here, uh, because he's, um, uh, among many other things, he's uh, very efficient and got us all the information we needed in uh, less than no time. And he is actually now the assistant winemaker, correct? Yep. Roberto C. Blanc, bravo, since 2016. But he also has quite of a background in uh, winemaking, business and sales management. He is, the reason you see daylight behind him is he is in, are you in Austin? Yeah, exactly. Being very, very careful about going outside, I'm sure. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And I think he likes uh, hiking almost as much as Pepe does, because Pepe claims to uh, love mountains almost more. Well, not more than his family, for sure, because he's got a uh, beloved wife and four kids. But um, Pepe, uh, how to put, you know, you're going to talk about yourself, but I just want to mention a couple of things that really struck me. Um, you know, you are in Catalonia and Spain, but you have worked with uh, some amazing people. Uh, you worked in Saint Emilion, you worked with Didier Dagonal. Thank you for loving, you know, Upper Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc as much as a lot of sommeliers do. You've worked in the Nahe and Burgundy and Alsace. Um, he's committed to biodynamic viticulture. He very respectfully and humbly, I have to say this, was the driving, the gentle but persistent force in uh, creating this new appellation. Uh, you know, so I have said more than once with a little giggle that you bring great uh, credibility to the word Kaaba, though you don't use it. So hopefully, uh, you know, it elevates it in people's minds, but we're very careful. You know, we understand that that's not what you, um, you, um, relate to with your own estate bottled uh, sparkling wines made by the Massage Classique, Classique, the Champagne process with, with actually terroir that's as complex and, and old, if not probably significantly older than Champagne. And you know, move over fossils in Champagne because you've got more than enough uh, uh, calcium limestone and uh, you name it in your terroir. Uh, he also is committed to natural wine production with his relatively new um, uh, Consumoy label and project, which he will tell you about. I'm not going to take any more thunder away from him. So I'm giving you an actual Greek hug over, you know, whatever we're doing now. And I'm welcoming you to, uh, in front of all of our guests. Pepe. Thank you for being here. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Madeleine, what, what, what a rock star you are. I mean, I think, no, no, no. <laughs> you, I think you do the tasting. I, I, I prefer to listen. Eh? No, I do my homework and I'll tell you why. Because I really feel that the wine, you know, I was telling actually, I texted uh, Andy Holmes Cream earlier, Christophe, you'll like this. And I said, think about it. With Reventos, he's got the personality. It's times 10, it's in the glass. The wines deliver, you know, 
it's got the value, it's got terroir, and it's got an unbelievable story. So for me, not to read about you would have been insulting to you, you know? <laughs> Bueno, bueno. Listen, um, Josep, don't you worry about this year um, that we won't be able to have you um, assisting uh, hardly for harvest because we have uh, not only the coronavirus, but also an incredible humidity attack that uh, made us lost uh, about half percent of our crop. So I think oh, no. that you will be safe enjoying in Austin and we are going to take care of the little harvest that we will have, okay? And humidity is one of your, one of your enemies, I know, and I know you. Not one of ours. It's the enemy, the of, enemy. Of, of the vineyard. Yeah. But it's something that people um, uh, uh, have not paid attention to, you know, and always the North thing is, is better for wines. But um, let me tell you, if you want to work the vineyards in a, in a low intervention mode and giving the protagonism into, into really what's happening in, in, in the soil and in the plant and, and, and in the climate, um, the dryer's the best, so uh, um, I, this, this wine world doesn't make, make much, much sense to me in, this, in, in, in these days today, you know. Um, the plant belongs to the Mediterranean climate, it's like an olive tree, like little rain and poor soils and, and, uh, and dry environment. And this year that has been humid and challenging for us, together with the, with the cost cut that we needed to do to survive, it's been uh, very complicated. So. Um, yeah, I think there is a lot of fake news regarding the climate change affecting to be the culture, the South England is sparkling winemaking, um, some colleagues that go into the Pyrenees to plant vineyards and they only kind of like mix the consumer mind and, and, and make a big confusion. I think it's, it's much more simple than this and we don't have, we, we need to make an effort to, to, to stop that, the fake news in the, in the wine world. Eh? So uh, north of Morocco, there are fantastic vineyards in north of Algeria and of course in all the Mediterranean shores, especially again if you want to work in, a, in an eco and biodynamic uh, manner. Although we can talk also that in my humble opinion, biodynamic is a little bit uh, overrated mm. and maybe part of the past. Eh? And now that we have to go back to common, common sense, apply what we learned from biodynamic, but go a little bit more into true farming. No? But uh, maybe Josep, we need to get into, no? into work. And are you going to pass a little bit a couple of slides? Yeah, I will share my screen. And yeah. And I, I want to make sure you know, that there is no misunderstanding here. I am very concerned with climate change, and I think that everybody, we need to take care of ecology and we need to take care of wealth distribution in this crazy world dominated by consumption. No? But, um, but when we talk about viticulture, uh, I think we really need to simplify the message. This is what we're going to try to share with you for the next 45 minutes. Eh? You have to make sure you tell us about these gorgeous horses. I saw uh, a, a little bit later, I saw uh, you behind one of them and I was thinking, boy, doesn't look like easy work. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so um, um, first, a uh, quick um, uh, message here to, to, to share with, with everybody. Um, today, uh, a little bit of where we come from. We are the Raventos family. We are the family of bubbles because um, it's a very historical uh, um, uh, farming land where we have, in the case of our family, we have documents from the 1400s. So my wife, Susanna, and I happen to represent the 21st generation together with Josep, my cousin here today with us, although that he's in Texas. Yeah, um, but uh, trying to pass it to the 22nd. Yeah. But very important is this, this date here, 1872, when Josep Raventos Fachó, the grandfather of my great-great-grandfather, um, produced the first 3,000 bottles of a sparkling wine, traditional method in Spain. He actually traveled to Champagne several occasions, but was a, the biggest visionary in the family who developed the method with the grape Charello. Yeah. And this is what really gave birth to uh, what today is known as the cava industry. His son, Raventos Domenech, develops the Macabeu Charello Parellada Blend, which is something we can talk about, but it's, it's, it's still extremely um, uh, popular and, 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 and known today. No? My grandfather made wines during the, um, um, the World Wars, and he was extremely successful because every time that there was a World War, the World War started and, and lasted 
for longer than, than we all wanted. Um, Champagne area was blocked. So he and Codorniu brand were the real alternative um, uh, to Champagne and make a significant growth in the, in the 50s and, and, and 60s and 70s. But in 1986, he quit the Codorniu uh, famous brand because was, the, the brand was gravitating to volume, pushed by Freshenet and the disaster of, 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 uh, of, of an area that was uh, um, too much focused into, in, into volume. Eh? So he left um, uh, that big brand and concentrated in, in the historic estate that he had inherited, what today is Raventos y Blanc. And Raventos y Blanc is the last name of my grandfather and, and somebody that had the vision to create the first, I would say, estate, a sparkling wine in, in, in Penetra. Eh? Um, sadly, my grandfather passed away very young from a heart attack, he was 62 year old, and then um, couldn't see his vision uh, um, um, created. But um, together with uh, my father and, 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 and uh, my, my father, brothers and sisters and, 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 and rest of the family, uh, we created this, they created actually the cellar that we're running today. And then um, moving back to 2012, it's quite significant that um, I spent quite a bit of time in the Americas and I learned that we needed to take, the, um, we needed to take it to the next level. Eh? And that if we were not comfortable with what Cava had become in the world with an image of an extremely great value bottle, but not really caring for terroir, which, which is what uh, we believe in, we, um, I learned this actually in Chicago with Andy Pace, said, Pepe, don't hate the players, you have to change the game. <laughs> so that's what we did. And we humbly declassified from Cava and started working to the creation of a new appellation that still now is in negotiations with, with the Catalan government and the Madrid government to become a, a, a first IGP on, of the small valley of, of the river Anoya. Conca del Rio Anoya means the valley of the river Anoya. And uh, this is what we are uh, working in today. Yeah? And uh, as Josep uh, pushes in, in, this, in this slide, here you have a little bit the requisites of what we are making today with Conca. It's, um, it's uh, the first thing that is the most important. Is you see the first word in this slide, and this is the important message here. It's all about origin. And for us, wine is all about origin. And the more local you go, the smaller you go, the intimate that you go, then, then is when you find the magic in anything, but also with wine. And then you have a little bit of other requisites that we can talk uh, in another moment, but um, um, uh, state produced, native grapes, biodynamic viticulture, 18 months on, on the list minimum, always vintage date, and like really um, high-end requisites for, for, the, for sparkling wine. Actually, and you actually have the disgorging dates. I didn't know this until today on the back of the bottle. That's phenomenal. We have the disgorging dates. We have, and more important, Madeline, I would say, we have a map of the property with a distinction of the vineyards that go into that blend. Yeah, and this I don't know if you can you see that, but there and you go. It's fantastic. This is very important when we go again back into origin. Here, um, it's, I love this slide because the message here is not only that little origin of the very northern tip of Penedes, this is where you see the end, the end here that um, 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 uh, shows us the north, mm -hmm. there would be the Montserrat mountain range. For the ones of you mm -hmm. who have been to Catalonia, Montserrat, Montserrat mountain range is in the very center of our, of our country. It's a, it's a center of energy of our country. It's um, also a symbol uh, of all the Catalans and it's where there's a beautiful monastery that be, be, after the Sagrada Familia is what is most uh, visited in Spain. Well, sadly now also with the, with the soccer, everybody goes to see the soccer field, nothing against it, but I think this is much more important than that. So really this is Montserrat and this is the very tip, the northern tip of the, of the valley of the river Anoya, where we're working to create the appellation. Also something I would like to, 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 to pay, uh, point out in this, in this um, slide here is that this is the mountains here uh, where I am moving the, the mouse. Um, do you see when I am moving the mouse, you said? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, Madeline, okay, thank you. This is the pre-litoral mountain range and this is the littoral mountain range called Garraf. This is Mediona. 
Uh, does everyone know literal means coastal, correct? So, exactly. Uh, yes. Exactly, coastal range, fantastic. Yes. And this is the valley, that the, 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 all the Penedes Valley that goes here in El Vendre arrives to the ocean. And this is extremely important because after uh, making wines with Dagenau know, and really falling in love into uh, soil, and while for most winemakers, soil is maybe one fourth, for us, I think right now is, is more than two thirds of the wine. Um, we studied with the University of Barcelona of Geology, trying to understand our current landscape and our current um, soil story. And we learned that this valley is an oceanic valley. This valley, as we were talking before when you mentioned about the fossils, was covered by the ocean. The ocean entered here by El Vendre and arrived all the way to Montserrat for three million years during the mid Miocene. So, by being at the very end, at the very end of that ocean entry, we were like really the shore. There was a warm period of time for three million years, shallow oceans, so a lot of maritime life um, 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 that was in all this area. And when the ocean went back to the actual shore, you can see here sitges. This is the ocean, the green thing here below. That's Left the Mediterranean, right? That's right Mediterranean. There, yes. right. Left all the life fossilized, carbonatized in that limestone. And this is the biggest and the most strongest point of typicity for uh, a Conca del Riwanoya. If you work well together, the, the, um, you understand the farming to respect that origin, this is what we taste in the wine. And when you taste today with De La Finca more than anyone, because it's on the, we'll talk about this in a minute, but in the more mineral soils of the property, um, this is how the limestone looks like in 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 uh, conca del riwano yeah, these see. pictures are spectacular they really are Beautiful, aren't they you see two types of of diatomeas here you see uh, what all are the uh, uh, type of uh, mollusks bivalvas uh, mussels ish and the all the gastaropodas type of snails and what you see here actually are um, los modlus, como sería los modlus? Maybe Nuria, who is 10 times smarter than, well, a thousand times smarter than <laughs> it's, Nuria. It's actually a very similar word, it's a mold. It's a mold, thank you, Nuria. Yes. So these are the molds that you see, but also sometimes with a beautiful uh, morning light, you see um, the, um, the, uh, the real uh, nacar of the real fossil that is 15 million years old. So it's really, really something beautiful to see and that we encourage you all to to come and visit us when you are in, in, in the Barcelona outskirts. This is the river Anoye here, and the, the, all the farm, the Raventos farm, painted with the different plots here in white. And something that to understand is the importance of the river, Madeleine, and, and be with me here now, is that after that period of, of, of oceanic invasion and then drying, all the valley was filled with eroded materials of the, of the surrounding mountains, no? The mountains erode and they feel like, if you feel a, a bathtub with clay. And then the river did like all the river, what all the rivers do, which for you Americans is very easy to understand because most of you have been to the, the Grand Canyon. What did the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon eroded a plateau and created a valley, pushing all those, those, those materials um, uh, uh, to, towards the ocean, no? So here, is at, at a small scale, the same that the river Anoya did, pushed all those uh, um, um, materials to the ocean, making that the oldest soils go on the surface, because all the, all, all the clays are used to the ocean. So this is very important characteristic of all the farms located by the river Anoya bed, is where this old limestone uh, goes into surface, and by right farming, you express that salinity into sparkling wine. So, and I'm going to interject just because if everyone's heard this, you know, you heard Pepe say correct salinity. And if you are tasting uh, any of these wines, but particularly the sparkling wines, he's not kidding. There's this mouthwatering acidity, but then the aftertaste, which is very prolonged, is actually a little salty. It's the damnedest thing. And forgive me if I interject sometimes, but I want to make sure that everybody gets what you're saying and doesn't miss uh, the meaning of, uh, of what you're saying. And that's born of these soils, it's fantastic. 
and then thank you for 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 um, explaining this is very important i tell to the journalists they go a little crazy with me if you like fruity <laughs> champagne but if you like minerality give us a chance to the farmers of conca del rio Anoy. okay so um this is a drawing a beautiful drawing of the state and now we are facing from the other side of the previous map so now it's like if we are in the north and we are facing the south southeast mm -hmm. these are the mountains of Garraf. so behind here is the ocean um, these mountains make a beautiful protection of extre extreme humidity that makes that in Penedes we sleep much colder than in Barcelona at nights we don't need mm -hmm. the use of air conditioning and this allows us to do a wonderful low intervention farming because the humidity pressure is much lower eh? here is where the cellar is this is where I am right now talking to you <laughs> our little house in the middle of the state but extremely important to have an attitude of understanding of climate of, of, of what's happening here every day in our opinion the lake and the forest the wood of El Cerral this is a hill it's kind of like this so all this area is the north uh, north um, uh, slopes of El Cerral and eh? the northern slopes looking into Montserrat looking into us now and the southern slopes um, the message here with this, with the, with this slide, with, with to share with everybody, is the way that we work. And uh, it's a very simple way. As uh, here uh, it says very well, we have vineyards, we have cereals, we have olive trees, almonds, fig trees. We um, plow with horses. Um, we have a herd of sheep and goat. We have pigs in the farm. Um, recuperating the old tra tradition of making our own um, um, charcuterie. Um, chickens and, and, and rabbits, two vegetable gardens and such. That's the idea is very simple. We are just trying to recuperate the ancient Mediterranean farm where animal, man and plant live together in a closed ecosystem trying to make the most authentic, sustainable and respect and honest pure wine for all of you. We abandon the idea of perfect wine, we abandon the idea of method, we abandon the idea of consultants and we just go small and, and we just go naked and we just go a little bit crazy. So this is the message that we want to share with you with this slide here. I hope Well, it's goes. obviously, you know, what you're doing is what a lot of people talk about in, in different components, but you're doing it in a way we just saw it, you know, in one slide. It's really, it's really something and it makes it easier for us to understand when, 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 when uh, you talk about sustainable, because your view about sustainability isn't just for the, the vineyards, it's for the surrounding land and, the, and everything. It's uh, very neat to, to hear. What are we looking at now? Oh. We, um, let, 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 let me um, uh, develop a little bit on, what you, on your comment, Madeline, that I found very interesting. We don't know anything. And every generation has to start from scratch, you know? And, um, but I think, we feel that we are on the right way and that's what gives us peace and, 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 and a sense of living and for example working with the biologists that are the ones that really know what's happening we learned that biodiversity is extremely important and that um, the humanized landscape of the mediterranean is an extremely diverse um, 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 landscape because I thought the more uh, powerful, diverse, and natural landscape was the Amazonia, for example. And then you learn that, yes, it is really wild and beautiful and very important for humankind and for the earth and for nature. But the fauna and the flora and the biotics are only the ones that belong to that climate. However, in such Mediterranean uh, patchwork of um, agriculture, where cereal and olive and vineyard and forests and herds of animals, they kind of like mix together in that mosaic, that makes it an extremely diverse ecosystem, which is very important for, 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 for humankind and, 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 and for the planet. No? So at a smaller scale, we are um, 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 uh, applying, we are um, um, pushing, we are inspired by developing that mosaic in our farm. But not because we are inventing it or copying it, it's because it's what belongs 
to that farm <laughs> many generations ago. So kind of like everything is making sense in a very natural way, in a very fluid way. But you're encouraging it. I mean, you probably increase, uh, increase the biodiversity in, uh, in your area, which I find thrilling. And it's very beautiful because we are encouraging is this by us going back to backstage and putting that olive tree and those herd of goats and those trees that you see here on the front of the stage. Oh, I just saw the people working the, the vines. I hadn't looked closely enough. And these are all native grapes, correct? The message of this yeah, line yeah. Is, a, is a little bit old school message, but sometime mm -hmm. with my cousins, we, we, we share some, some, some old school slides, is that we push for native grapes. But I think we are at another level of discussion so we can move forward. No, oh, the horses. Um, when my father was little, and my father Manuel, who is um, uh, the, the soul of the project and, 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 and the guidance of the project and the, and the spirit and the calm, um, he's 73 year old, so I am talking that 60 year ago, not 6,000, just 60, all the farm was cultivated by eight horses. And uh, he still, I uh, talked to him and he remembers perfectly the name of all the horses that were here. I only remember one that is Negrito, but he, he, if we, he was here sitting in my place, he would remember the, the name of each of those. No? So we are simply recuperating something that was here 60 years ago. How beautiful is to plow your vines with horses. Now of the 55 hectares planted, we are working six hectares with two horses. And every year we gain a little bit of terrain to the tractor. Why? Very simple. We um, limit the compactation of the soils to the maximum by the use of horses. We limit the emission of the carbo emissions with the use of the horses. But the most important of all the arguments in our opinion, besides the passion I have for animals, of course, is the rhythm. The rhythm of the horse is the rhythm of the nature, the nature. You can treat every plant like an individual and you really understand what's happening in your plot, in every row, in every plant. It's like if you go um, from um, one village to the other village with a, with a Mustang, or you go with a one village to the other village with a bicycle. Nothing against the Mustang, but I tell you, if you go with your bicycle, you will never forget every single um, turn, every single uh, slope, every single tree, because you sweat that distance and you were in the rhythm that we as humans are prepared to connect with the nature. And then when you go back with a Mustang and you have a lot of fun, you will remember everything you did with the Mustang. Now I have to ask you, do, you, uh, what, do we know this horse's name? That's you, correct? This What's is Francois. Like we have two horses. We have yeah. Francois and Henri. Francois on the picture is a Breton, Breton from Brittany, very powerful and, 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 and beautiful animal. And then three years ago, we brought Henri into the farm. Henri is from Jura. Jura, as you know, is a beautiful area for natural wines. Um, it's a beautiful area for Comte, one of the most delicious uh, mm -hmm. cheeses in the world. But then what people don't know is that they have a horse breed called Tricomtois, which is kind of like the cheese's name for horses. And they are extremely easy to train, a little smaller. And, and, and this allows us to do a little bit more precision in the slope vineyards of the property. So that's Henri, correct? And this is Francois. Correct. <laughs> Um, one message that, that uh, Giuseppe encourages me to share, and I think is very important, is when we talk about the pH. No? Really, um, it's kind of a, a wonder that we are in Mediterranean um, uh, landscape and Mediterranean um, uh, latitude. We can harvest charello at 12 bome with a pH below 3. pH, for the ones of you that are not so familiar, it measures the strength of the acids in the, in the grape. And it's an extremely important value um, for aging, for tasting, for balance, um, for antiseptic, for protection, etc. No? And really, that combination of our climate, 
a little inland Mediterranean uh, with our attitude, our clays, our limestone, with these indigenous grapes and all the tradition has enabled us to understand that um, we can harvest at this level of freshness. And this is what made that Josep Ravendos in 1872 thought about Champagne for our region um, because Tacharello expressed uh, that, level, that level of freshness. Thank you for explaining it so simply and clearly because everybody understood if you have low, the lower the pH, the higher the acidity. And that's something that, you know, the Champenois uh, make a very big deal out of. Um, and, it, you know, it's essential in, uh, in, in quality uh, sparkling wine production. And I haven't come near to making it, but thank you for translating that for us. And an example is, I think, it's, it's becoming more important for any wine. This glass I have here is a Garnacha. It's a beautiful old vine of Garnacha of a friend farmer called Pep Moulet that we vinified in Kansumoy. And, um, it's extremely delicate, you know. We sometimes are used to think that Garnacha from Spain will be very volume, volume and, and big. And, and I think these, these days yeah. are over, you know. Like Jorge Ordóñez convinced with La Rocas that the Spain Garnacha had to be like mermelade. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are many other ways. You can taste the Garnachas from Dani Landi in Gredos now. And they are extremely beautiful, precise and precious. And this Garnacha I'm tasting here in natural without any sulfur is tasting amazingly elegant. Why? Because of the pH again. Hmm? The pH and, is extremely And important. if everyone who's listening is going, well, that's nice. That's great. He's got it. How can we get it? It has not been distributed to the United States yet, but note to self, you know, I'm sure it will be sooner um, or later. And um, uh, I'm very happy to hear you talk about Garnacha. It's a little bit of a segue, but um, it was a revelation to me to see the delicacy combined with power of Grenache in the Barossa Valley. I mean, Grenache is actually such a noble grape, aka Garnacha, that reflects terroir magnificently. So I can't wait to taste yours. You have cool nights, is that correct? And that's yeah. unusual. So you have you have diurnal swings. I didn't I didn't expect that. Normally, by this time of the night, at between 10 and 11 p.m., the, 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 the pattern of wind changes and the, northern, the northerly enters and cools down in Penedes. And um, so during the summer, a typical summer day when there are no storms from the north or from the east, the east ones bring us uh, a rain and the north ones cold. But normally, the, the weather pattern for, for, for uh, ripening is southerly, um, um, all day, my, but by 10 p.m. it changes to the north and really it lowers the temperature and the humidity a lot, which makes us a beautiful, uh, you know, like like like, like uh, um, helps to to ripen as, as softer, to keep the balance of acid in the grapes, and also to fight against humidity because humidity during the night, for example, if we were closer to the ocean, it's impossible to fight with 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 mildew and with oidew unless unless you go with classical conventional uh, viticulture. Right. We uh, before we move on though, I want to make sure that we we talk about the two wines that everyone's got in front of them: the Blanc du Blanc and the De La Finca, because. I'm always reminded by my beloved consumers, and I have to tell you that I love guests. I use that word because I spent many years in restaurants. I, I love the guest more than I love uh, the wine because you know I've spent my whole career with them in front of me, and they often want us to hear. They want to hear our words, how we describe the wine. Do you mind if we if we talk about those two sparkling wines before we talk about uh, the Kansum wine? Absolutely. Absolutely, Josep. Do we have that that picture with 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 the different uh, vineyards? Mm -hmm. in the, in the, fantastic. Right. Okay, here here we go. Very simple, but very different. So you have to bear with me. We don't describe the sparklings with vintage or non-vintage. This is a marketing invention of champagne that we don't believe in. So all our wines are vintage because wine is origin, and vintage is one of the most distinctive things of that origin. What happened in this, this plot or this part of the world during that agriculture year? Um, so we're not going to talk about vintage or not vintage. We're not going to talk about Reserva, Gran Reserva, and this kind of like old, uh, you know, um, method-oriented uh, marketing. We are going to share with you our limited and probably mistaken view, but how we see sparkling wine and why we're catching the attention a little bit in the world, because it's a new dialogue, it's a new vision. 
it's for sparkling, also it's soil what matters. So we are going to define these two wines that you have here, the Blanc de Blancs on the top left of the image here, and De La Finca with a red top here and on the center, right? In a very simple way. Yeah. This is again the same picture that you can recognize. Previously, we talked about that, this idea of ecosystem, and we talked a little bit about the slopes. And this is what we have on the glass. Because of the, these slopes that we have in that uh, property, Erosion brings all the clay to the bottom part of the property. So the vineyard here in green, in yellow, and in blue, and in green, are the lowest vineyards of the property that have received the microerosion clay of the property, where we have two meters of clay on top of the limestone. So Madeline, where is the region in the world where the white wine is most prestigious? Well, there are several, but I would say, because I've heard you say it, uh, that there is a connection to uh, White Bordeaux, correct? And their Burgundy is probably the most prestigious in terms okay. of dry white wine and limestone. It's super important there. Okay, there you go. So we can, well, I think we can agree that Burgundy is not the best region in the world for white wine. Uh, this is marketing. But it's a great region, and definitely they have they, they have done their homework, and they have their position into the world as like the best, no? So if we go to Cote de Bonne, White Burgundy area, we have very famous crew. For example, Merceau, Pouligny Montrachet, mm -hmm. Sassan Montrachet. Um, I love Saint Aubin because it's a great value. But let's see what dif what is in your opinion, Madeline, the difference between Merceau and Chassan? Well, I think the real, the real difference is who makes it, the hand, the thumbprint of the person who makes it. But when you talk about Chassagne and Pumini, you're talking about a different soil composition and you're talking about townships that are right next to each other, not even talking about the vineyards when you look at them and the premier crew and the grand crew and the village, you don't even have to move your head, just your eyes down the slope to see where they're located. And they've spent what? A couple, three centuries talking about the difference of terroir of those, <laughs> of those areas. But, and they, I love white burgundy. I hope you love white burgundy. They really, they, they really, they really, they really did their homework and, 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 and you know, and, and, and now they, they, are harvest, they are harvesting what they planted for, no? Um, as, as far as I learned when I was making wine with Olivier Lamy in, in Santo Ben at, 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 at Uber Lamy, um, Merso is very famous for their volume. Eh? What characterizes the Chardonnays in Merceau is the volume, is the, 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 the gras, le côté gras, le côté plus The puissant. fatness, the roundness, the, yes, and its generosity. Tea, for yes. example, goes more into that, 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 that verticality, eh? that, that lineality, and that sensation of, 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 of aging and maybe more mineral, no? So at a total different level, we are like, if, if we compare, you know, to like the third world, you know, we're like the, the, the poor guys of Canada, but the, the philosophy is the same. So these vineyards have received the clay. So the blanc de blancs that you have on the glass is our, our wine of balance, where you will see more the volume side of what a good cava, that because doesn't exist, we have to call it conca, could be. And that's the Blanc de Blancs. It's the wine of balance, it's the wine of richness, it's the wine of pleasure, and it's the most beautiful wine of, the, of, of what we make, of our nature makes. I think it's really like uh, one day Michael Skernick told me in New York, it's like, this is the, this is the sparkling wine that uh, gives more pleasure for every dollar that you pay, including all the champagnes in California. I said, Michael, 21 generations, uh, founders of Cava, biodynamic, estate, uh, um, uh, millions of years what making else can the we make? What else can we make? And say, well, then how much, how it doesn't cost like a champagne? I say, well, because champagne is real estate, you pay for real estate because it's close to Paris, it's one million for every hectare, and this is still poor farming land, so here you're paying for viticulture, so you don't have to go that, to, 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 to those crazy prices. So, so this is the Blanc de Blancs, the Merceau of Cava, the, the wine on clay, with, with that distinctiveness that you can see at the back, you can see that little um, um, bitterness, this idea of salinity, but more than anything, it's a, it's a very pleasant, pleasant and easy to drink wine. However, on the slope, right here, we see the red ones, it's the Vigna Mesalta, very Ah, poor. the blue and the, oh, the red, okay. That's, that's the red, very poor Vigna Mesalta to texturas. Yeah. This, this 
more um, uh, shiny blue, that pink here, all that slope here. These are vineyards on the slope. So the, the message here is that all the clay has eroded and the plant is living on the limestone. So this is the pulling of the sparkling in our wow. This is the wine of salinity. This is the wine of verticality. This is the wine on, on, a, on a more a linear side to it. It's a not so friendly wine, but for the wine lovers, I'm sure you will understand very easily that it's a wonderful wine to pair with food, to enjoy for its complexity and for its sense of place. And, and I, I would bet money that it would be very happy if it got some bottle age, because I'm sitting here tasting both of them. I'm almost finished with the Blonde de Blonde because it's complete, even without food. But I'm really playing. It's like what the Italians call Vidi di Meditazione with uh, the de la Finca, because that aftertaste is going, okay, I'm pretty cool now. But you know, if you forgot me for two to five years and came back, I would show you another face. And I was going to ask you, one of the things I was going to ask you is how you feel about aging your, your sparkling wines post disgorgement. Are you a fan of doing that? Because I think this wine is, is terrific right now, but I think it will get another dimension with a couple more years in the bottle, no? Yes? Yeah, de de definitely. I am, I am a fan on looking at our sparklers, such as um, a beautiful white uh, a wine from any region. And I think um, they demonstrate that they are traveling extremely well through the time. Charello is the core of these wines, is an extremely reductive grape. Reductive means that it, it, it like takes a lot to oxidize, so it really is in the, on the reduction, the reduction path. Um, and I think it's beautiful to taste those vintages after the years and, and have the wine as collection, no? Um, so, so our experience is that now we're tasting 80s and 90s from our uh, private collection, from our uh, family collection. And of course the wines are more evolved, are more into the oxidative notes. Um, and the, the bubbles are very, very thin, but they have a fantastic acidity, freshness, and they are right there. So, are, yes, are you I, late disgorging anything? Are you holding anything back uh, to do a late? We disgorge? hold about of the of the late eighties uh, of the late uh, meaning of of the old eighties, eighty one, eighty two, mm -hmm. until the nineties. We have maybe sixty bottles on the list. Ah. And, and on the 90s, we started to keep a little bit more, so maybe we have a, a few hundreds on the list. But we also uh, have, uh, because we didn't have the, this tradition, um, a lot of bottles that have been disgorged in the, for example, bottles of the 90s, disgorged in the 2000s, and they are showing a beautiful, beautiful uh, balance. Fantastic. And maybe more oxidized, but maybe more ready to drink. Yeah, but your, your winemaking is so careful and with Shirello, I'm finally pronouncing it almost correctly, being reductive, you know, that works uh, against the oxidation or with it, I should say. I mean, I, so if I manage to make it there and I'm really, uh, um, and uh, you're feeling good, I might be lucky enough to, <laughs> to, to taste something from your, your yes. cellar and see how yes, it's yes, doing. Yes, yes, but I want to be very honest with everybody. <laughs> While I am convinced that our terroir is one of the most beautiful terroirs on planet Earth to make intense mineral sparkling wines. I also want to um, um, share with you that um, I think Champagne has done a better job in the method winemaking and, and really for aging, they are far ahead of us. This is something we still need to make a homework eh, in our region. And, and, and it's only the young generation who are starting to, to really develop that. So let me put it this way. If you like fruity drink champagne, if you like mineral, try Concaval Rivonoia. If you like to pay for real estate, pay, drink champagne. If you like to pay for viticulture, drink Concaval Rivonoia. But yes, I admit that champagne have to make the homework and we need to really make the homework. Uh, we have to really work harder to demonstrate and learn from aging. And you know, in that, that part of method, we are still very young. I think uh, we will look forward to your doing your homework and getting the results of it. And I'm, I am going to push us along so we don't lose anybody because we have to talk about Kansumoy. But I want to say to everyone who's listening, you're all being very well mannered and quiet. Don't forget to verbal a little bit in the Q&A or the chat room. And if we don't get to your 
questions on this, we will make sure and follow up on, because I'm going to send them all to Joseph, who will, <laughs> who is, you know, both of these guys speak better English than I do, so uh, they'll be happy to answer, but um, um, it's, it's a joy to taste these side by side, and I think the expression of minerality, even if you didn't believe in minerality, it's there, you know, it truly is, the salinity, the length, the mouth-watering acidity, and uh, I'm only missing some really terrific cheese to have with it, but. Minerality, minerality doesn't exist for the commercial wines, for the marketing wines, for the people that produce 10 and plus tons of, of fruit uh, per hectare that water their grapes, um, you know, then uh, minerality doesn't exist because it's all like, like chemistry. But when you talk to the old farmers, you know, the old farmers, I, like the one I was today here, people that, really care for their vineyards and they tell you the difference of those plants that are living in La Peña, they say, they call it La Peña, the rock, eh? and, and really the poor soils that they care for and work with their hands because the machine cannot arrive there. Those are the wines that they love the most because those are the wines that really express that true sense of origin. No matter if it's schist from Priorat or, or Ampurda, right. if it's limestone from uh, Sant'Emilion or La Rioja or, 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 or schist from Rivera Sacra, it's granite from Gredos, but every region has to interpret its own minerality, but it definitely exists and in, 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 in really need to, 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 to make that effort to understand that, that, that local, that artistic, that natural part in, in, in a glass of wine. No, it's wonderful the way you say it. It's expressing who they are. I mean, you know, that's a little part of them. Or, you know, where does the, the plant start and the person, um, you know, start? They're, um, they're together. Thank you for that. And it's in the bottle. Yeah, Madeline, before we move into Katsunoi, I would like to add that for uh, Catalonians, sparkling wines is our milk. So when we taste sparkling wine with the consumer, you know, I always like to say, you said I'm missing some cheese. And I'm saying to myself, if they are drinking sparkling now, what we taste it, keep it for dinner. Because throughout the entire meal, the sparkling is really going to show the versatility that we see in, uh, in bubbles. Oh, oh, very much so. Everyone, uh, I don't know if I properly introduced Nuria, who I'm happy to call her a colleague and a friend from uh, Detroit. And, she, and she's the reason these wines are in Michigan. Uh, but she is uh, intimate with, uh, with uh, all of the producers that she represents. But I think a significant little part of your heart is right here. Yes. Yeah, and sparkling from breakfast to dinner. <laughs> Seriously, on Sunday for breakfast, if you have some lox with bagels, if you have a greasy mm -hmm. omelet, no matter what you have for breakfast, if you're in the mood for just a sip, you know, half a glass, uh, please try it because it's a good way to start Sunday. And someone's asking about natural wine and you are about to hear about it. So no worries, here we go. Thank you, Nuria, for, for, for bringing um, one very important part into, into that recipe, which is culture, eh? and, and, and bringing uh, all the people that are with us to, today to, 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 to Catalonia and to our culture and to our tradition. And, and really, I think this is what makes the world a, a better place, you know, to share with art and with culture and with, with food and wine. So really, I think it was a very, very important thing. And, and you know, if you go to a restaurant in, in Catalonia, you know, in one of these villages at lunchtime and you see all these people doing making business, you know, and, and maybe <laughs> half of the tables are drinking sparkling wine with their lamb chops or their mm -hmm. rice, or, 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 you know, or, 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 or whatever, or the vegetables they are, they, they are so, so uh, it's, a, it's a great call, eh? it's a great call. So uh, this is Can um, uh, We have a few minutes here, um, but... Um, Take your time, don't feel rushed, it's okay, it's up to you, but I mean, I just, I want to hear about this land. This to me is staggeringly beautiful. Oh my. So basically, um, uh, the story is very simple. I, um, I became very passionate uh, with natural wine while living in, in the time I was living in, in America. And, 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 and for example, uh, tasting at Rootstock in Chicago uh, with Andy, I have fond memories of my first bottles of, of, uh, 
of Jura eh? and, 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 and those uh, beautiful Auvernois. And I mean, it was a moment that they weren't that popular. So, you know, we start to understand that this, this way of making wine gives you a lot of pleasure. And then I travel around Catalonia and, and in, in old country houses, they make their, historically their house in the, in the basement, you know, in, in their cellar. And wow, I connected, no, that, like those flavors, no, of the wines that you ask them, and well, this is the wine that has been made like this forever, you know. It's a very simple farming, pure, authentic way to make wine for, for private consumption. You know? So I thought uh, we had to investigate on that, and that this would be a path that would give us a lot of a lot of learning that we can also apply to our main Raventos in Land cellar. So I started to make some essays in the garage at home. And um, it's a small- In your garage, yes? Some, it's a some experiments place, in your garage, yes. Small place, it's underground, it's cold, it's clean. Nothing had been there before, so it was sterile. So I wanted to make sure that the yeasts around the skin of the grape were the protagonism of, the, of that fermentation. And, uh, and Cerello took it to the, another dimension. I mean, it was the best Cerello I ever tasted in steel. It was beautiful and, and acid, but at the same time rich and, and complex. And, and I fell in love with it. So um, it took me a few years to, to understand that we could develop a, a still natural wine project in, in, in Penedes. No, I, I knew that it needed, it needed to be here. We are not a flying winemaker type of family. It needed to be close to where we are. And this is what we found. We found on a beautiful uh, Sunday early morning bike ride, about uh, 45 minutes away from home, by car, three hours by bike. In the highest mountains of Bash Penedes, this uh, farm for sale that's called Kansumoy, and that basically it's um, more than a thousand acres, but only 300 planted, not 300 planted, no, less than that, 100 acres planted. And, um, and this is what we bought. We bought uh, a lot of work. <laughs> so it, it was a very cheap opportunity, but with a beautiful uh, uh, potential. No? And, um, you know, it's also important to understand that in Penedes, Northern Penedes is famous, famous for sparkling wine. And Bash Penedes, which is, means low Penedes, the Penedes in Tarragona province, is famous for still wine. So uh, a lot of things uh, kind of connected, you know, uh, that natural passion. Oh, there you are, the map, Bash, great. Yeah. Bash Penedes, um, um, uh, uh, high altitude, which is something very important for Kansumoy. It's at 600 meters level above sea, which is uh, 1,200 acres. And you can see Mallorca Island at sunrise. So um, that's where Everyone we Everyone do the math. If you go times three, because we're the only country in the world right now that's not using the metric system, which is just crazy, we're pushing 2,000 feet above sea level, which is, you know, Napa doesn't do that, just to put that in a frame of reference. Now, admittedly, you know, uh, Argentina starts at 2,000 above sea level, but that is, that is really high. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and thank you for correcting me because I had 1200 and it's actually mm -hmm. it's 1800. So yeah. by this level, so close from the ocean, this is, can tell you how rugged and how mountainous that area is. So this is where Northern Penedes, a sparkling region is. This is where Southern Penedes, Bash Penedes, famous for, for, for steel wines. And right here in the more poor, wild and isolated area, kind of like the priorat of Penedes, is where Kansumoy Farm is located. Are there any other producers near you or is this just? Yes, there are a lot of historic producers that make grapes and they bring them down to, to, the, to, 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 to the richer uh, uh, villages for blending because people love for their acidity. Eh? And uh, that's what really we fell in love with because it's so high altitude that it's much colder and, and it's, it, it is much later in the season and the grapes bring in a beautiful acid that is very important. Again, low pH, very important for natural winemaking, the low intervention winemaking. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> this is something to share with everybody that um, Tarraco, Tarraco, Tarragona is very important and underrated eh, and under the radar because we all like to go to Barcelona, but it's a beautiful city. And it was the capital of the Roman Empire 
for many, many years. Yeah. And during that time, there are quotes of the Emperor Augusto that the wines from Tarraco were amongst the very most prestigious of all the empire. And look at the very top left of the uh, slide. Mm -hmm. This is the Roman Empire that go all the way from the uh, uh, Middle East all the way to Portugal, Spain, and, 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 northern, and northern France, and even the south of, of, of England. No? So the wines from here, the area where Kansumoy, were amongst the most prestigious. And this, I like that we put this, Josep, because it brings me back to where we started, that we need to gain more confidence in our Mediterranean climate, which is the history of viticulture, and it's where a vine flows naturally, like an olive tree and like an, olive, and a, like an almond tree, when you want to make a very, uh, let's say, nature protagonist, not humanized, not chemistry, um, not uh, fertilizer type of viticulture. This is a beautiful image, I think, that summarizes this idea with the highest mountain of Bach Penedes, Montmel mountain range here, and some old vines of Montonega just behind the house of Kansumoy. Just gorgeous area. Wow, what a shot. Did you replant the vines or? Uh... No, this is, these are 60 plus year old vines. Mm -hmm. And we have the, the, the dream of recovering a little bit of old vineyards here in the forest and such. But for now, everything we're doing is taking care of these old vines mm -hmm. that were uh, semi-abandoned. There is an existing cellar here that when we can, we want to refurbish and start to make the smaller cubes mm -hmm. in here. Right now we are vinifying at a cellar down in the village of a friend of mine that has some, uh, um, some uh, excellent uh, space. And actually this is where, this, is, this actually here behind the house is the base vineyard of the perfume bottle that you have, I think today, oh. you think that are perfume, correct? Yes, we have the perfume and it's right uh, in front. Oh, I see where uh, the arrow is going now. That's where the perfume comes from. Exactly. This is the vineyard of the base of the perfume com uh, comes from the parallelado of the perfume. And then it's blended with Malvasia, the citrus that comes from down the ballet. The ballet, that's what gives this aromatics of, of terpeno. Of, of flowers, of, of perfume, uh, such as the name, mm -hmm. but the base, that freshness, that, that uh, sense of, 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 of dryness, if you will, it comes from those, those vineyards here. You can see better behind the house. Lera is the vineyard that I was pointing to you in the previous picture. I got to tell you, the floral aspect is so tender because normally when we think of florality in wine, sometimes people find it off-putting if it's very dominant in like a Tarantas or a Gewurztraminer or something like that, but this is very tender. You know, it's very pretty and quiet and it's on the palate as well as the nose and it's really neat coming off the two sparkling wines because the acidity is still mouthwatering, but the whole wine is just gentle and, um, and uh, uh, balanced. I, I like it very much. I want to say feminine, but it's not politically correct. So I'm going to say elegant and tender is that okay and no no and it's definitely a very delicate wine and it's a wine um that that i i, I first blended a long long time ago um and and and, and i always been very interested with this idea of easiness and floral and and, and mm. delicacy but then with a serious mouth into the wine and try no i think you hit it pepe mm. i just opened a little the, the, the q a here I want mm -hmm. to make sure the first one from Joyce Hayes says about the timing. Uh, one from Terry Bartley says reviews and core is being requested. Terry Bartley, how is climate change affecting mm -hmm. our effort? Um, basically, we have moved uh, our harvest days about a week ahead um, to peak at the, at the same level of, of balance that we like. Um, also, it's a little, we find a little bit more difficult to predict the harvests. Normally, we are in an area that the pattern was two years on a drier side and one year rainy. The rainy year is not so good for the quality of the grape, but it's very important for the plant to gain um, energy because we don't irrigate anything. We're, we go very, very naked into, into, into the, the farming approach. Um, and now it's a little bit more, more, more uh, less stable. For example, we had 13 was a rainy one, but then we had 14 dry, 15 dry, and then 16 was extra dry. 17 was also again on the dry 
tight and then 18 a lot of rain then 19 was a drier and beautiful uh, vintage but then 2020 is like the most rainfall we had in the last 70 years oh my so the patterns are changing a lot but we don't see um i would say less rain or or or, or um, something that we have to be concerned especially if we take into account that again a vine with 300 liters were spread vegetates fantastically and that too much rain is too much as uh, too much humidity too much humidity is a real challenge for all of us did you see the other couple of questions about the uh perfume um one the, the question about least contact if it's extended least contact and also if you have some favorite foods for this delicate white i don't i don't answer the the food pairing question <laughs> I, um, uh, this is something that I think everybody has to figure out uh, uh, according to 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 round tastes. But perfume is a wine that definitely doesn't need much food into it because it's it's, it's delicacy and this is the concept of the wine. No, but yes, um, I would uh, uh, like to say that there is extended lease contact, and uh, not only this, but we bottle. Um, the batches little by little, so the last uh, bottlings of the same vintage are the ones with a more extended lease contact. So the ones of you that are really into details, I would uh, encourage you to get the, the last lot that are in the back label, like in the, like if it was a discouragement date. Um, thank you for the new answer to climate change, Terry. Thank you for asking, and thank you everybody for being here tonight. Um, what is my opinion of natural wine? Your wines are farmed with respect to environment in a way. Do you consider What's that? Let me move this because you consider yourself a natural winemaker. Um, well, uh, it's well, that's a that's a cool question. Um, if natural wine we agree is wine made without sulfur, or that maybe you add also sulfur in some part of the process, some people like in uh, grape reception, some people like uh, before bottling, um, below 10 grams per liter, 10 milligrams uh, per liter, 10 grams per hecto. Eh? 10 is the, 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 the figure that the French have agreed into creating their natural, trying to start to define their natural uh, uh, concept. Yes, I consider myself this because this is what we do in Tansumoy and in the garage at home. Eh? And also not only this, because everything that we learn from this, we apply to Ravento y Blanc, and I would say Ravento y Blanc today are the sparkling wines in the world with less sulfur added, eh? that I know of. Probably I'm mistaken, and there are some others that I know of, but definitely non-champagnes that I know, and, 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 and not a single winery. Maybe there is an exception of somebody that makes a bottle that says is, is something, but as, as a philosophy of the house. Why? Because um, as much as we respect um, uh, every way of making wine, um, we are crazy about nature and we don't like to, to, to modify it uh, uh, with, with, with chemistry. I see natural winemaking as the ultimate challenge. I am passionate for alpinism, as Madeline was mentioning before. And um, the simile I'd like to share with you, the idea I'd like to share with you is that the objective is to make a great wine. The objective is to climb a 7,000 uh, meter or 8,000 if you can, not my case. But the, if you are a purist and a passionate, the, the mission is to do it without oxygen, you know? It's not to go to the Mount Everest with a bunch of oxygen to be there in the picture. It's to be able to train very hard and to get there without oxygen, without artificial oxygen. Well, to do this, you need to train very hard, right? To make a wine that shows soil and origin, that travels where geography and travels where time, travels well time, without sulfur is the ultimate challenge. So you really need to work 10 times harder. That's why people don't like natural wine. That's why the establishment don't like natural wine. And there is a lot of criticism because it's the most difficult thing to make. And sometimes they're rather lazily made. I mean, the reality is, you know, you're talking about putting tremendous effort into doing it and you are as hands off as you possibly can be. Your respect for everything to do with that grape and that bottle is so evident uh, so I think, to, to me, you've answered the question um, uh, completely and, and, um, and delicately. And I'm going to tell the one person who's looking for the perfect thing to have with that perfume, because why not? You know, you're talking to a Greek, a perfect piece of tender fish with nothing on it other than a little olive oil and lemon would, <laughs> would do the trick uh, perfectly. Uh, Pepe, I can't thank you enough. You have made a room full of friends 
in the United States, which is not nothing new to you, I'm sure. Uh, but thank you for um, keeping your heart open for us. I'm glad you like us Americans. I'm glad you lived here and you were even a little bit inspired by uh, whatever parts of our culture and that you make yourself accessible to us. And um, you know, you have you have my gratitude. And I'm going to get on a plane and, and come visit you. And I want to remind everyone that we keep these wines up on the website for at least over the weekend. So if you only, uh, you know, decided to pick up one of them and you want to get all three or you want to get some more, I'm not even going to show you the website. You just go there, virtual events, it will lead you to your store and you will happily see um, all the wines that we talked about tonight uh, on the website and in the stores. Um, next week, by the way, we're taking a pivot, uh, Pepe. We are not going to Champagne, but we are going to another a beautiful expression of high acidity and natural minerality, a grape that I swear carries a little pocket of rocks around with it, and that's Riesling. Um, from the Nahe, from Austria, um, from Washington State, um, and from New York State, actually. And uh, Nuria, Michael, Christophe, Joseph, and especially Pepe. It is now 11.15, I think, in Barcelona. I don't know if you're going to have a cup of coffee or something to eat or you're going to go to bed, but if that is still para por mi, gracias um, for being here tonight. If that is still, if that is still, Madeline. Para calor, estinillasas. How do you say to your health in Spanish? Salud. Salud. Salud, salud. Gracias a todos. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Gracias. I want to go on the bike ride uh, on your vineyard that Kareem is planning. Yes, count on it. And everybody, if you, your travels take you to Barcelona, please uh, be, be uh, um, uh, bear in mind and, and, and connect with us via Madeline, via Nuria, via Michael. Please and come to visit the, the, the state. We're only half an hour away from the city. We don't make very good wines, but we do beautiful things. <laughs> that is a little bit of a sweet lie, but uh, especially Nuria and Michael, thank you for making these wines accessible. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and let's stay connected and as cheerful as we can in these extraordinary times by anyone's measure. And how lucky are we to play with something that ignores barriers and brings us together. Bravo to wine, don't you think? Have a good evening, everyone. Take good care. Thanks, everybody. Adeu. Thank you. Good night.